Thank you everyone for coming to today's webinar on configuring and using news articles. Before we get started, I do want to go through a few pieces of housekeeping. We do mute all of the microphones and phones while the webinar is going on. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the Zoom chat. We have Samantha with us here who will be monitoring and answering questions in the chat. And any important questions that come up, we'll make sure to answer during the Q&A at the end of this session. Uh, we are recording this webinar, so if you have to leave early or if you want to uh, come review the information again, you'll find it uh, on our website and on our YouTube channel, and I'll show you how to get there in just a second. Uh, we also have a lot of other training videos and webinars and tutorials on that YouTube channel, so make sure to keep an eye on that so you can stay in contact with us. Um, so if you go to our website, clubexpress.com, you can also see when we have upcoming webinars. If you go to the calendar section in the upper right, you'll see all of our scheduled webinars. So you can uh, register for them ahead of time and enter any questions you want to see addressed. Um, and then also just you know stay abreast of when we are having uh, future webinars and sessions. Once this is recorded, we'll put it up on our YouTube channel. You can find that by going to YouTube and searching clubexpress.com. That's with the dot spelled out. Or you can go to our website and click on any of our videos from there. Um, once you're on our YouTube channel, we highly recommend you subscribe, not just to bump our viewer count, but also just to add some uh, uh, extra visibility to our webinars so that when we add new features and things like that, you can you know, see them in your feed as we are putting up new videos. If you are currently a user of Club Express and you're really enjoying it, we do recommend that you leave a review. We love to hear from our users. And the best part about having reviews like that is it helps other people who are looking at our product decide if it's the right product for them. So if you have you know, an interesting experience with us, please uh, leave a review so that we can help people find our product and make sure it's the right one for them. The last thing is we do have a boot camp coming up. It's our second boot camp. We have we hosted one back in December of 2021 and we're doing our uh, second boot camp this June. It'll be, uh, I guess, today's June first. So later this month, it'll be uh, June fifteenth and sixteenth. You can find more information about it in your own website's control panel. If you go to the support section, it's right there at the top, and you'll see our upcoming boot camp where you can register. Right now, the price for registering for that boot camp is one ninety nine, and that does cover all of your organization's administrators and coordinators being able to come visit and watch live this two day kind of like all day long series of sessions that we're hosting for you to either get up to speed or learn new tips and tricks. We have everything from like beginner sessions all the way to advanced tools like the ad hoc reporting tool. Um, and then additionally, once you've paid for that boot camp, you also get access to the recorded sessions of all, I think about 20 sessions that we're going to have, and you'll have recordings of all of those. The reason we're pushing it to two days is that we can, uh, one of our biggest pieces of feedback from last boot camp was that people wanted longer, more in depth sessions with a more dedicated QA to each section. So uh, now you will have the opportunity to have a dedicated QA on each of our sessions. So it's going to be really valuable for a lot of people, and we really hope that you attend. So now that we've uh, talked about all of our little housekeeping, we can go ahead and get started on today's session. We're going to be looking at the news module and how you can configure and make use of it uh, to get information to your users on your website. The first thing we're going to look at is how to do the like broad configuration for news. We're going to go over how to create categories. We'll look at the pre-existing category. Every news module comes with the quote unquote news category baked in. Uh, we'll talk about how to use that and how to organize things into that category or other categories. But it's also important to note because we get this question a lot. You don't have to use the blanket news category. A lot of people actually take advantage of this module in ways that aren't strictly news um, and what they do is they will just not put anything in that news category. And if you don't put anything in there, it won't show up. Um, we'll also look at how to reorganize your categories and also how to reorganize articles within those categories. And we, uh, the last thing we'll talk about is something that's kind of new to Club Express. If your organization is what we call model two or a multi-chapter organization that has multiple websites for one overarching organization, we now have the ability to do what's called content syndication, where you can push content from your main site all the way down to your other websites. So you only need to create that content once and have it show up on multiple websites. 
After we talk about that, we're going to go into how to create and edit articles. Uh, we'll talk about how to add an article and give it things like a headline, a title, summary, how to change the visibility for who can read it and things of that sort. And then we're also going to go and spend a good amount of time on how to actually craft an article. Um, a lot of people will pull articles from other websites and you can copy and paste text in that text in that way. I'll show you how to add pictures and links and other widgets within those articles themselves. And so we'll go into depth on that. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start our demonstration, which means I'm going to pop over to one of our demo sites. Uh, and we're using a different demo site today because this allows me to uh, show off some of that content syndication I was talking about once we get to that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to look at is the category configuration. And now I'm going to change my screen sharing over to my demo site. So now you should be seeing uh, one of our demo sites. It's the Illinois Association of Finance. Uh, most of you probably know Club Express is based out of uh, Illinois near Chicago. So this is just our little fake um, demo site based on a financial organization. And we're going to be taking a look at our news module. So you'll see right now I'm on my home page and I'm logged in as the uh, blanket administrator we use for a lot of our demo sites, Martin Smith. And I'm going to go up here into my right hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and click on control panel. And when we're talking about um, pieces uh, like the modules of our, on our website that can be used to communicate with our uh, with our members, you're going to find all of those modules under the communication section. And you'll find this module under the website module section right here, news slash articles. That is the default name for this module. And if we go ahead and click on this, it's going to take us to the administrative side of this module. So the first thing we're going to see is this little search tool where we can uh, limit how we want to search for existing articles. But before we get into our articles, I actually want to talk about the overarching categories, because like with a lot of modules on Club Express, before you can create anything, you have to define the categories of the content you're making. So the first place I'm going to go is this button right here that says Manage Categories. And this is a fairly simple page. There's not a lot to it. We have a simple Add Category button which gives us the option to give a category a name. And that's really all you have to do here to create a category. You can create categories for national news, you can create you know, magazine articles, you can create things similar to uh, blogs. You can name your categories whatever you like. Um, you can even do things like you know, uh, member stories if you wanted to post stories that your member shared with you. You can categorize them that way. And then for those organizations I was talking about earlier where you have multiple websites, uh, for one overarching organization. If you are on the parent website, uh, as in like the top level of the organization, you'll have this checkbox here that says share articles in this category with lower level groups. So what that does, all you have to do to share uh, articles from one category to the lower site is just check this box. And when you create categories, when you create articles that are within this category, those articles are all going to show up on the lower site. So you control that by category, not necessarily article by article. Once we create the category, you'll see them show up here. So we have two categories right now, national news and IAF news, which is our Illinois Association of Finance, IAF. And you'll see we have the last category here, just news. I am not using our news category. And you'll notice there's no icons because once the news uh, category is not being used, it's essentially invisible. Uh, you are more than welcome to use news as a category for this module, but if you wanted to be more specific, like break it out into, into national news and IAF, IAF news like we've done here, you can just not create any news articles and it'll act as though this category does not exist. Another important thing you can do when you're managing your categories on this page is control the display sequence. So later on, we're going to take a look at what news looks like for our members. But if we click right here, we'll see display sequence. And you'll notice because we don't have any news, that category doesn't show up here. And we also have these two uh, category options, and I can reorder the order in which they show up, and that will change the order in which our members see these categories when they look at the module on the website. We also have the option to click alphabetize, and it will take, so if we have you know, 20, art, uh, 20 different categories and we didn't want to spend the time to organize them alphabetically, you can always just click alpha and it'll resort all of your categories for you alphabetically. And once you have them in the order you like, you can simply come down to the section and hit save and it will organize all of your categories into the order that you select. Similarly, if you want to change the uh, 
organization of articles within a category, this is the page you'll come to. And you'll click on this icon. You'll notice it's the same one, two, three with the three lines next to it, except for it's down here next to the category. And if, it'll show you how many articles we have in each of these categories. And I can reorder them from this screen. So here's all of the four articles we have in our national news section right now. And I can simply click on one of these articles and use these arrows, similarly alphabetize. And once I reorganize them, I can hit save. And that will change the order that these articles show up in on the actual news module that our members see. A note about that, if you don't organize these manually, they will always show up in the order that they are created. And that is, well, actually, sorry, I misspoke there. The order that they are published. So they'll show up in order of date. And we'll see that here in just a moment that we're going to see we can control when the article is published to the site, not just when it's created, but we can set a date as the publication date for our articles. And so I'll show you that in just a second here once we're creating an article. So once we've got our categories created, we've got them set up in the display sequence that we want. And if we already have articles, we've got the articles set up in that order. We can actually now start crafting articles to post on our website. So I'm gonna go ahead and click return to previous page to take us back to our uh, news articles manager. And now this is where we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, actually crafting an article to put on our site. You'll see I have a few articles here and I've got one that I'm going to use as kind of like a dummy article because I've already put the content in it. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and act like I'm making a brand new article. So if I click this button right here that just says add article, we're going to get a pop up window. And the very first thing it asks us is what category do you want to put this in? And you'll see there's all those three categories that exist. There's the IAF news, the national news, and then our regular blank news uh, category, which I'm not using so that it doesn't show up on our website. I'm going to go ahead and say this is a piece of national news. And there's that publication date I was talking about, our active date. This is the date that it will become active on the website. If I was to set this for tomorrow, I can go ahead and create this article and choose all of this stuff that I want to for it, but it will not show up on the website until the, the morning of this date. I can also set an expiration date, but that is not necessary. If I set an expiration date, that is the date that the article is no longer available. And so we could say, you know, two weeks from now, this will be a redundant article and we, doesn't, we don't need it to show up anymore. And we can go ahead and have it automatically drop off of the news feed at that date. And then just like every good news article, we've got a headline. This is the same thing as like a title. And this is what will be kind of in bold letters. It's the actual name. It's the attention grabber that you're going to have for your article. We have a section where we can list an author. By default, when you're logged in, it's going to list the author as you, but you can change this name to whatever you like. And a good note is if you have a, a very large article that has multiple contributors, you can simply add, you know, other people's names here to say, you know, this was written by multiple people and you can list multiple authors in this, uh, this line right here. I'll go ahead and just leave this as a Martin Smith article. And I'll say this is, you know, some news. And then down here we have a summary. This summary is gonna show up in two places. Um, it's going to show up on the news page. So when you're looking at the news page, and we'll see this in just a little bit, there's going to display all of your articles in little boxes. And it's going to show them the summary because it's not going to show the entire article uh, on the landing page where you're browsing through. This is where you can put a little bit of a blurb about what the article is about. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put the first like half paragraph of the article here, and then they'll leave it with a, you know, read more dot, dot, dot to kind of try to draw people into reading their article. After we fill in a summary, we have the option to insert tags. This is a uh, piece of our website that can interact with other modules. So if you have you know, the forums module or the blogs module or photos module, you can tag things similarly. And if you search on tags, it'll show you all of those different pieces of your website that are associated with that tag. So if we had the tag you know, 2020 cookout and we had a news article about that cookout, and we had photos about that cookout, searching for the tag 2020 cookout is going to show up. We actually have an entire webinar just about tags. And I'll actually show you how to get to that momentarily because I'm gonna show you how to put a YouTube video uh, into one of our news articles. And I'm gonna uh, highlight the tags webinar for that. So you'll see uh, how to go access that tags webinar a little bit. 
The next line here we have is visibility. This is who can read the article. Um, we do have the option for hidden if, it's, if we want to temporarily remove an article, if you, know, you need to make edits or something, or there's a piece of information that's no longer correct and you need to really quickly take it down, you can come in here and set it to hidden. And then once it's ready to go back to be read by the public, we can change it to one of these other two options. If we set it to everyone, that means if someone who is not a member of your site or a member that isn't logged in comes to your site, they don't have to log in to read this article. If it's an article that is specific to your members and you want to limit the access to the information in that article to members, you can say to members only, and then people would have to log in in order to access the actual article itself. We also have these three checkbox options here. We have show on main news page which if we uncheck this, it will not show up in the news module. The usefulness of that is we can send a link to the news article manually without having to display it on our news page. So if you wanted to have like a little bit of a more, you know, secretive or private news uh, article that you wanted to share with select people, you don't have to have it show up for everyone. You can just manually send that link to people. But if you do want it to be a piece of public information, you can choose to show it on the main news page. And then, you know, if it's available to everyone, everyone will see it. Or if it's available to members, then you have to be a member to log in in order to see that article. The second option here is the show active date on news story. So you may want to include this date up here as your publication date and say, I want people to know this came out on 6-2, or you may not want to share that information. You may want to say, you know, I, I want this to appear as though it's always been on our site. You don't have to share the date that it became active. And then similarly, you can do the same with the author. If you want it to be a bit of an anonymous article, you can choose not to show the author and you can keep this as an admin only field so that you can remember who wrote it without sharing that information with people that are viewing the article. And then our last little bit down here is our share image. Our share image is a really useful tool, especially for news articles and blogs, because this is how we're going to share things with Twitter and Facebook and other social media groups. So if you choose a share image and click here, it's going to give you this familiar selected image that you might have seen when you're building a web page or when you're building an email. This is our select an image tool. And if we click on show files, it's going to give us all of the files that are stored on our website right now, or we can filter the search down if we know what file we're looking for. And this would allow us to uh, kind of step in front of Facebook or Twitter or whatever Instagram and choose an image that is going to be associated with this link. So if we send this link out on Twitter, instead of just showing our logo, like Twitter likes to do, or like Facebook likes to do, we can say, we actually wanna show you know, this image of a room or whatever. If you have a, you know, maybe an image of the author of the article, you can add that here. If it's not already on your website and you need to upload a picture from your computer, you can click this button right down here that says upload new file. And that will allow you to browse your computer for a specific image and then upload it. And once you hit select, it's going to preload a little thumbnail of the image here. And anytime you share a link to this article on any other website, it's going to display this image along with that link instead of some random image from your website like Twitter and Facebook likes to do sometimes. Once you've kind of set up all of these options, you've set up your, your summary, you've set up your headline, you've got the article kind of organized the way you like it, you'll notice we haven't actually put in the content of the article yet. So we would save this. And once we save a blank, let me go ahead and put in summary. Once we save the article, you'll see there's our blank article that has nothing in it yet. And you'll see it shows up with the author, Martin Smith, our category, National News. Because I set it for tomorrow, the status is future, meaning it will not be visible until this date. It's set up to be visible and we have an expiration date associated with it. And then we get these icons over here. Um, the eyeball icon will give you a preview of what it's going to look like. Right now, we haven't put any content in it, so we're not going to see anything. We have a delete icon if we want to remove the article entirely. We have this little wrench icon right here. If we click on this wrench icon, it's going to take us back to that same screen we were just looking at where we can come in and say, actually, I want to change the active date to you know next week, or I actually don't want it to expire at all. I can remove the expiration date. I can come in here and change any of these options, including changing the image that shows up on social media when it's shared. 
And then the last thing we have here is this pencil icon. And a lot of you will be familiar with the pencil because we use it as the blanket Club Express way of saying, make changes to, these art, to this article. If we click on this pencil, we get a nice little pop-up here. And this is how we can make changes to the actual article itself. This is the body of the article. This is, you know, when, when you're reading a newspaper and it says flip to page 11 to read more, this is page 11. So right now we have this big blank white space where we can just click and start typing anything we want uh, to be in this article. I do want to let you know, those of you who have been with Club Express for a few years might be familiar with the way, with what you're seeing right now. This is our, what we call our advanced editor. This used to be the only way you could edit custom pages and home pages and things like that. Um, now we have a few more extra tools, but you'll still see this in the home page and custom page editor as our advanced editor. I highly recommend instead of just starting to type in here that you use what we call page rows. That's my very first step that I do. So page rows over here on this right-hand bar lets you set up how you're going to break your content into pieces. And this lets you kind of set up uh, horizontal rows broken into different uh, sizes. So you can do things like um, a very popular one would be this 2575. And when you see those numbers, that just means what's the percentage of width we are breaking this content into. And so if I go ahead and just click on 2575, you'll see I get this nice little outline here that breaks my content up. So I can say, I'm going to put in you know, some text here, and it's going to be limited to 25% the width of the page. So if I were to you know, highlight this and, you know, put it in a few times, it's always going to stop me from going more than 25% wide of the pages that I'm looking at. And then similarly over, similarly over here, I can put different information and it's only going to take up 75% of this article. What a lot of people will do is they'll do this 2575 and they'll use this section um, to put in an image of maybe the author or uh, related text or related um, images for the article. So if we have an article about, say, um, our, you know, an organization, you know, it's an, it's an article about the Illinois Association of Finance, I can choose to put the logo in this 25% section over here. And all I did to do that was I put my cursor here. I'm going to place my cursor in this 25% box. And I'm going to click on this icon right here. This is our insert image icon. It's the same as inserting that share image we looked at earlier. So when I click on it, I get this same select an image option where I can show files that are already on my website, or I can upload a file from my computer. And once I select that image, it's only going to be taking up 25%. And then the rest is going to be text for my article. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here real quick, and I'm going to jump over to an article I made ahead of time to show you some of the what you can do with this editor. So right here we have our postponed webinar wows viewers. This is kind of a, a tongue in cheek way of saying, you know, sorry for postponing the webinar last week. But if we click on the pencil for this one and kind of spread out our viewer, you'll see I've added quite a bit of content already to this uh, article and I've broken it up in a few different ways. The first thing I've done is I've done what's called image floated left at the very top here. And you'll see after all of these different options for breaking your content up over here, we have these sections at the bottom called image floated left and image floated right. These are also a very popular way to add images to articles because what it does is when you insert this image, it allows your text to wrap below it. So instead of breaking this in a hard line vertically, we can say we want, once we're below the image, we want the text to go ahead and start wrapping back to the left of the image. And all you have to do to use this tool is right click to replace this image and you get this option to change image. And then once again, we're presented with this select an image option. And then all we need to do to wrap the text around it is just put in more text. And you'll see if I just copy and paste this kind of Latin mumbo jumbo, once the text gets below it, it wraps all the way back to the left. And this is something we can do. I like to do this over and over. So once I finish a paragraph, maybe I'll come over here and do image float right. And I can place an image there. 
And now the image is wrapping over to the right. And this lets us kind of like alternate images back and forth, left and right, kind of like you see in newspapers sometimes. So this is a great way to display a news article. Um, one other tool that we offer is a way to break the information vertically with what we call horizontal lines. Um, so in this top toolbar up here, you'll see all of your regular font tools like undo and change styles, bold, italics, underline. A lot of those are very familiar to people that have used a, um, a word processor before, but we also have a few more advanced tools. If you click on this wrench with the little green plus sign right below it, it's gonna give you a few of our more advanced tools where you can actually change the font size, change the font. And one that I really like to use is this icon right here. It's got a few lines and then a hard blue line in between them. And if I place my cursor somewhere where I want to break my content, it'll place a nice little just line to separate my content uh, horizontally. And uh, we'll take a look at what that looks like on the page in just one moment. But before I do that, I wanna show you one last tool that I also take advantage of pretty regularly when I'm making these articles. Um, and that is the ability to share videos within an article. Um, so if I scroll down on this article here, you'll see this is just a YouTube video. This is our tags webinar that we hosted last year that explains how to use and take advantage of tags. And all you do to add a YouTube video into an article is you place a content row where you want that video to go. I like to use my alignment tools to always make sure that my cursor is centered using this little center alignment. And then this icon right here, it looks like a, you know, a multicolored play button. This is our media options tool. And when you click this, you get two options. And the one that we prefer to use is the insert media embed code. And now when I say media embed code, a lot of people like put their hands up in the air and they're like, oh, I don't wanna worry about code. I can tell you from many, many pieces of experience and training people, this is the easiest way. This is the easiest bit of code you'll ever do because all you have to do is go find a YouTube video. So I'm going to switch over to this tab right here. And here is our tags webinar on YouTube. And all you do to find that is just go to YouTube, search for club express, and then search for tags. And once you find the video that you want to share, if you click the share button right here, you'll always see an option that says embed. And this is gonna give you this code right here. And just clicking on it is going to highlight it. And all I'm gonna do is copy this text, go back to my website, click this insert media embed code option. And it gives me this big blank text right here and I'm gonna paste and that's it. Now we've done all the code we need to do, copy and paste. And if I save this, we have our YouTube video. See, now I have it twice here. All I did was just create a row. I used this tool to insert the media embed code and I pasted a video in. And so now if we go take a look at this article by clicking on our little preview eyeball right here, you'll see there's my image floated left where all of my text is kind of uh, going back underneath my image. There's my horizontal line that I placed in to separate my content. And there's my YouTube video that I just pasted the code in. I didn't have to type any code. I didn't have to do anything like that. I just pasted it from YouTube and it shows up right on my article. And then I placed another horizontal line here and I did an uh, image floated right. And now I've got these alternating left and right images for this big article. So it's very, very simple to kind of create these nice little flashy articles to display that information. And you'll see up here, our title of our article, the name of the author and when it was published. You don't need to put this on the article itself. Our website is gonna go ahead and give you the, the headline, the author and the publish date if you choose to show that automatically. So all you have to do is just put in the content of your article, any images, line breaks or videos down here at the bottom. Um, the last thing I wanna show you about creating an actual article is the use of widgets. So down here at the bottom, we have a few of our, of our widgets. You'll be familiar with widgets if you've used our new page builder or home page builder. Um, but you can also use widgets within an article, um, including funny enough, we have an, a widget for news articles. So if you want people to see 
uh, other articles from within this article so that they can just keep hopping around different news articles, we have a widget for that. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and show you how to create, uh, you know, here's a bit of a, of a Twitter feed. Here's our upcoming events and here's our news feed. And this is actually very, very simple to do. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go back to our control panel, go back to our news and articles under communications. And once again, I'm going to click on the pencil for this uh, article that I created. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom of this article, you'll see here's what widgets look like in our advanced editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. If I click down here and just place my cursor where I want this row to go, I want three widgets. So I'm gonna click 33, 33, 33. And you'll see I get three equally sized sections. And what I can do is up here in the upper right-hand corner, we have this little gear icon, and this will switch us to our widget view. And this is where we can insert all sorts of widgets. We've got things like uh, birthdays, where you can uh, call out people who have upcoming birthdays within your organization. You can do things like call out members that have uh, renewed or joined recently. And then for news articles, if you click in this section, there's an insert recent news feed. And this is how you show uh, recent articles. So you can say the title here is recent articles. You can say time period. This is how far back we want to show articles. Maybe we only want to show the last two weeks worth of articles, or we want to show even more than that. We can show up to 140 days or even more than that. This is how far back you want to look at articles. And this, what this is looking at is the published date of your articles. So anything in the time frame from today back to you know 140 days ago will show up. It asks you how wide and how high you want this widget to be. A note about that, a pretty good width, if you're doing a, one of these widgets in this way, is usually somewhere between three and 500 pixels. And then for maximum height is how high you want it to go. And I say about the same thing. I usually say about 500 pixels. Um, because it is within one of these page rows, even if we say 5,000 pixels, it will never get wider than one third of the page. So that's why I usually say just keep it to about 500 because it'll keep things nice and tidy. Um, and then additionally, when you're creating one of these widgets, you have the option to include all categories, or we can say, I only want to show national news, not the IAF news, or vice versa. We can select specific categories and it won't show articles from those other categories. And once I save it, we get this nice little like army green checkerboard. And once we apply that, instead of seeing this checkerboard on the article, we'll actually see that widget that we were looking at before. So once again, I'll show you what that looks like if we go into our article and go to the bottom, there's that recent articles widget. This is what it will look like. It's being limited to a certain size. And you'll see, because we said, I don't want it to be any more than 500 pixels tall, once it gets to a certain number of articles, you get this little scroll bar here where you can scroll through. It would be the same thing for our upcoming events. If we had 400 upcoming events, it wouldn't list them all the way down. We would get a scroll bar here so we could read through them. And same thing with Twitter. If we limit the height, we can you know, see a few of our Club Express tweets, but you have to scroll down to see more of them. The last thing I want to show before I jump back to our Q and A is how to uh, access the or what the uh, the news feed looks like, and how to add the news feed to your homepage. So if you have the news on your menu, like I've set up here, all you have to do to see what it looks like is click on news. This is what our news module looks like to our members. We get these nice little um, here's the headline that we set up. Here's the publication date for it. Our little uh, blurb about what the article is, and I leave a little read more section so that people can say, you know, oh, I actually do want to know more. And then there's a button. They can either just click on the article or they can just click on the read more. And that will take them into what we were just looking at, the actual article itself. Similarly, if we go to our homepage, there is a section on our homepage where we insert this widget. The homepage works a little bit differently than the advanced editor we were looking at. We do have a lot of materials on how to edit custom page and homepages. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but I am very, very gonna, gonna very quickly show you um, how to get to that. So right now I'm on my homepage. So I'm gonna click on my little slide out bar here and click on edit to change my homepage. 
and go ahead and click on edit main version. And I'll go down to the section of my homepage that has that in it. And what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and drag in just a brand new row, uh, that same 33, 33, 33 option. And now some of the things I'm doing here, if you haven't edited the homepage, might be a little bit uh, foreign, but I would recommend taking a, taking a break here, watching one of our uh, page content editor webinars, and then coming back to the section to see a little bit more. Once we click on the cell that we want to add our widget to, we get our list of widgets here. And if we scroll down, we'll see our news feed widget right here. And if we click and drag this up to our content, you'll see this is a very similar um, list of options as we were looking at earlier in our advanced editor, but it's just given to us in a little bit of a different format. So it's the same thing, title, what do we want it to say? Normally recent articles, time period, how far back do we want to go on this widget? We can say 140 days. With, we do have the option now to say 100% wide instead of giving it a fixed width. So using this is a little bit um, more dynamic. So we can say, I always want it to be as wide as the content uh, section we're putting it in. We can either limit the height or leave it unlimited. I'm gonna go ahead and once again say 500 because it's a very kind of useful height uh, when you are creating these types of widgets. And then we have a few extra options here. The list is the normal style, but we do have also cards and a grid for this widget. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at what cards look like. And we have the option once again to select individual categories or include all of our news categories. And once I hit apply, here's what that recent articles looks like with our card widget where your members can slide through, excuse me, that is getting in the way. Members can slide through cards of all of our images and you'll see there's our share images that I was talking about earlier. So they'll show up here as well, not only on uh, Facebook or Twitter or other social media applications when people share them. All right. Uh, I think that is everything I had prepared today. Sam, how are we doing in the chat? Yes, we have a handful of questions. First question, could you show us how to activate news articles if it's not already active yet? Absolutely. So if you're if you're in your control panel and you're in the communication section and you don't see news articles, what you can do is you can go to this configure option right up here in the right hand corner and you've got this little wrench and it says configure. If you click on this, you'll get a list of all of the modules that exist within the communication section. And if it's not turned on below this line that says disabled modules, right now you'll see this website has ad hoc forms and surveys disabled. If the, if the news articles was disabled, so we'll go ahead and just turn that off for a second. You'll see news is now among the list of disabled uh, modules. And if we switch this back to active by clicking on status right here and hit save, now it's back among the list. It's above this line that says disabled modules. So now it is active. You can also change the name of it. So if you're using this module for something other than news, you may, you may use it for like announcements. You can, I think I misspelled that, but either way, um, you can rename the, the module there. And then menu text, similarly, instead of the name of the module, that's what will show up on the menu. So right now, I, my menu text says news. And so on my menu up here, it says news. So if I change this to, you know, articles, and if I save and close this section, oh, I bumped it off. That was my fault. That might be a little bit of a bug I have to talk to someone about, but changing that, uh, uh, changing the name there will change what it shows up as. Oh, you know why it, it fell off? It's because I disabled the module. Um, it's not because I changed the name, it's because I turned the module off. And so whenever you turn a module off, it's going to come off of your menu. Uh, that was a bit of a, a gaffe on my part, sorry about that. Um, but that would change the, what shows up on the menu up there. And then the last thing on this section is who can actually access it. You can also control here. You can say, I want all articles to be limited to members only. You can also change your SEO and browser title. So this is if someone searches for, you know, Illinois Association of Finance uh, news, because news is in this section, they might get taken directly to that 
uh, module. And then the last thing on this section here is our quick link text. And we could say, you know, news here. And then if someone visited, you know, illinoisassociationoffinance.com forward slash news, it would take them directly to our articles. So it lets you make like a, a direct link to that module named whatever you like. Okay. And the next question. Uh, so a couple people had some questions about the content editor. We do mm -hmm. have a lot of videos that go over um, using the content editor, uh, several of them. So um, if you're interested in all of those neat little tips and tricks, just feel free to pop onto our YouTube channel um, and take a look at those options. There were a couple of questions about copyright articles and how you might give credit for articles that you maybe didn't write yourself. So um, Devin, if you could pull up that edit option one more time yeah. or to show the article with the author information. Yeah. So this is where you can credit uh, authors of articles. It is something to be aware of and, and speak with the leadership of your organization about where you're sourcing your article information from. If your author is a member, you can speak to them and possibly get authorization for it. But you always want to make sure that your, auth your articles are coming from you know, a source within your organization or a, a publicly you know, unlicensed, you know, non-copyrighted material. Uh, that you're placing on your website. Okay, and next question. Could you point out the share icon in the news articles admin panel to share the article to social media? Yes, okay, there we go. So if we have an active news article, you'll have an extra icon here. And but right here, this article is our kind of ubiquitous icon we use to share with uh, Facebook and Twitter and other uh, social media options. If you click on this icon, it should give you uh, the option to share directly to social media outlets that you have linked to your site, such as, you know, like I've mentioned, you know, a dozen times already, Facebook and Twitter. And to uh, double back on that, there are social media sites that you yourself would have access to as well. So um, if you've been given the credentials to say your association's Facebook page, you would be able to log in and post that. So if you aren't able to post to a uh, Facebook or a Twitter feed on your own, um, you wouldn't be able to do it through your Club Express site. Right, it's gonna link directly to that account. And so when you click on those links, it's gonna take you to uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know, Twitter to begin the post there. It's gonna be kind of like pre-create the post um, so this is what the social media, what I just did is I went to the communication section and social networking is down here in the bottom right-hand corner. And this is where you can link to your organization's social media channels. And those are the options that will show up when you're trying to share something. Um, and clicking on those will take you to that site. But if you're not already connected to that site for your organization, it'll uh, kind of miss and won't let you post it. I think that that covers our questions. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming today. Um, thank you uh, doubly so for attending a webinar that we had to postpone for a week. And, uh, you know, a triple thank you for uh, bearing with me while I had some web browser issues that weren't letting me uh, share some things. I'll definitely make some edits to what you can see in the webinar. So if you want to see what that looks like, come back once we post this video in a few days and I'll uh, have some screenshots of what it's supposed to look like when you're, when you're not me using a web browser that kind of blocks a bunch of stuff. <laughs> uh, thank you everyone for coming and we will uh, talk to you uh, either during the boot camp or once we have our webinars uh, pick back up later on. All right, you guys have a great day and thank you so much.